Today we're talking about creating a daily routine during quarantine. Okay, I don't, I'm trying to get Jordan on to join, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So I might just say, Jordan, post in the comments. Join the conversation in the comments. <laughs> So thanks guys for joining us. We hope you guys are having a good kickoff to your week. We know that every week is different. Every day is different. It's like a huge roller coaster. Jordan and I were just over on the um, Instagram page talking about this. We were able to split the screens. It was awesome. We were able to see each other and have a conversation. It was so great. I'm so bummed we can't do it here on, on Facebook, but it doesn't matter. I will bring you guys the same message, okay? so. How many of us drop a comment or an emoji or something if you feel like in this quarantine life is you just like you think one day oh, I'm gonna kill this day I'm gonna I'm gonna rock it it's gonna be an awesome day and by noon all the plans are out the window yeah yeah I think that's that's pretty much how I felt for the past two weeks I, I have a different a different routine this week and I know it's only Tuesday but it's working out so far and I've been able to use some of the things that we've created over at Families of Character to help with that whole shift of, of it going from eh, like I feel like I'm spinning out of control to I think I got this I think I'm gonna I'm gonna kill it today so there's six things that Jordan and I talked about that really help you get into this daily routine it's really hard I think when you have however many kids you have drop a comment how many kids do you have in my house we've got four kids and those four kids are all different ages they're 13 10 7 and 2 okay and obviously it's easier with the older ones it's a little bit more difficult with the younger ones and then you've got my husband and I juggling the jobs and trying to get the homeschool work done and it just feels like we are constantly spiraling right and so it's taken a few weeks for us to find this groove and I, th I think I think this week we found it. So in this kind of journey and this self discovery, you know, Jordan and I came up with six things that are that help stick to that daily mindset routine. And the first one is mindset. <laughs> That's the first one. That's the first tip that I think really helps us. You know, like I said, it took me two and a half weeks to get into this mindset of okay, we're going to do this. Like this is our new reality. And I don't, I don't know about you guys, but here in Colorado on Friday, the news came that we're not going back to school. Like it's official now. And I was a mess. I was such a mess on Friday because what that meant for so many people and not just for my family, but for so many other families, um, whether you have a senior in high school whether you've got like this kid at home who just really needs to have that interaction with their teachers and their friends and like it just I don't know it just it was heartbreaking news and so in that roller coaster of emotions on Friday I was able to see like oh this is this is like grief I'm definitely going through these stages of grief where I'm sad and then angry and then happy and now it's fine and then I'm back to anger and sadness and and so it took me through the weekend. So now we're talking about two and a half, three weeks that it's taken me to find this mindset of, okay, you have to stick to the routine. And if you stick to the things that you can control, then everything is, is gonna work out. So when Jordan and I were on Instagram, we were talking, she was telling us, cause she's got this awesome background of her clinical social work. And she was saying, you know, in, in her practice, they talk about three Fs the feelings like you have to identify the feelings and then you have to from those feelings you have to pick out the facts and once you have the feelings and the facts set up you then can create the formula of how you're going to work through that and she reminded me on our website at families of character we've got a freebie a feelings chart freebie and this is so awesome because like it's taken three weeks for me to realize this but in our house We've got a lot of nonverbal emotions going on. And so for me to be able to print that off and ask my seven year old, like, look at this chart and how do you feel? Or my 13 year old, look at this chart and how do you feel? It's been such a huge tool. So 
So go to our website and download that tool and maybe it'll help in your family. You know, it's crazy because even my husband and I were taking turns in that non-verbal roller coaster where I'm kind of like, what, how are you feeling? And he can't express it. And then I'm taking my turn and I'm like, I can't express it. I just don't want to put it to words. And so we're kind of back and forth with that. So first thing is find the right mindset. That's the first thing to creating a good quarantine daily routine. Second thing that has, once I have found the right mindset, I found it this weekend. <laughs> so once I find the right mindset, create the schedule because you can't just shoot from the hip every day. You have to have a schedule that you're working from. And I know, you know, Jordan has been on me for two and a half, three weeks. Schedule, schedule, schedule. And she has been so good about committing to her schedule. And every day I resist that so much because I just wanna do what I wanna do. Like everything, if you, if you think about the emotions and everything we can't control, everything is being taken away from us. But, you know, so, so now I feel like, well, I just wanna do what I wanna do. But when we do that and we live in a house with other people, how do you come together and unite with that? You can't. Because if I'm off doing my thing and my 13 year old is doing his thing and my husband is doing his thing and my two year old always does his own thing, but you can't create any family unity with that. So you have to create the schedule. And as much as I resisted it, now I'm here, I'm showing up for it. So the second thing on the Families of Character page that we have that's a freebie tool is this awesome, mine says daily, but I crossed it out. We, no, it's a daily, it's a daily schedule. And you guys can print this. There's one that's totally filled in for you already. And then there's one that you can fill in yourself if you're kind of, have a little bit more fluidity within your days. So create the schedule. Then the third thing is commit to the schedule. You know, I found myself last week like, okay, we're gonna do this today and this is gonna be our schedule. And by 10 o'clock, it was out the window because I was back to those roller coaster of feelings and emotions of, I don't really want to do it. So it doesn't work for my whole family if I say we're going to do one thing and then I myself don't even commit to it. So that's the third thing, commit to the schedule. You gotta commit to it. <laughs> the fourth thing that we have found is really helpful is, you know, Jordan talked last week about family huddles and how important it is to have a weekly family huddle. Super important to check in with everybody on Sunday. But what I'm finding, and you guys might find this too, in this time of quarantine where we're all home together, it's really good to have a daily family huddle. And so my whole family, we've committed to this, and it's, this is the one thing that's really, really working well for us. So we have started, in, we have to, everyone, all the kids, all four kids, both me and my husband have to be in the kitchen by eight o'clock every morning, where we have just like a five minute check-in we kind of talk about what we have for the day so we all know what to expect. How long is the 13 year old gonna be locked in his room doing his homework? Does my 10 year old need a computer for a Zoom class she's got? You know, so we're communicating, we're talking about what's on the day. Uh, we're coming together, we're saying a little prayer so that we can just all start our day just, just in unity. And then from that, we kind of disperse. Then we, kind of have a little midday check-in at lunch because everyone needs a break. So then we kind of come back at lunch. Now in our house, because we have a toddler and he kind of runs amok most of the time, <laughs> it's a little bit, like our day is a little bit flip-flop. So Jordan is really good about getting up, getting her day started, and then straight into homework with the homeschooling. Whereas at our house, it's a little bit flip-flopped because I, my toddler has to be preoccupied with my seven-year-old. And if my seven-year-old is doing homework, then my toddler, eh, that's not working for me. So, you know, everyone, everyone has to do it their own different way. Your family is gonna find your own routine and your own schedule that works for you, okay? Um, it's all about finding the grace for your family, which is actually one of my tips, is you have to find the grace. Find the grace within the day, find the grace within the schedule, but you still have to commit to it, all right? Um, evaluate what you have. If you've got a toddler, if you've got teenagers, you know, all of those things, you can all come together and work together 
to create some of that family unity every day. Um, but you have to all give yourself some grace and know that everyone's on this roller coaster of emotions every single day. And, and so we have to be graceful. Okay. So that's my fifth tip. It's a little bit out of order. It's actually going to be my sixth tip, but since I was talking about it, we'll throw it in there. All right. The last thing, the last thing, the sixth tip that I want to share with you guys is once you've had your family huddle to start the day off and you've had your midday check-in to see kind of where everyone's at, the, the last thing is, is you have to have a time of day where everything shuts down and you shift. You have to really be intentional about that because what I found, so last night my kids were outside playing and they wouldn't come in and eat dinner because they were just outside. Outside it was so fun, it's been so nice. And I didn't really push it because I was sitting on my computer still working until seven o'clock in the kitchen, just like, chick, 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 chick. no one bothered me. I made dinner, it's there if you want it. Clearly no one wants to eat it, but I'm still gonna work because no one else wants to come together. That was bad, it was really bad. It, it, it kind of left, it set us up for a night where we all were distant and we didn't really have closure to the day. So that that was hard. And the, everyone got to bed late. The whole evening was just kind of like, eh, whatever. It didn't really seem like we had spent any intentional time together. There's a difference when you spend time just talking about what you're doing and then going out and doing it versus just everyone in their own little world, right? You guys know that. Drop an emoji if, if you can relate to that. Um, so have that end of the day, shut off time. Kids can help with the cleaning of the dishes. They can help with setting up dinner. They can help with making dinner. All of those things, engage them in something different so that there is a break in your day, okay? So there's six tips on how to get through daily quarantine. The first one is mindset, find it, find the right mindset. The second one is create the schedule. The third one is commit to the schedule. The fourth one is, you know, have a helpful family huddle. And then the fifth one is shift your mindset from end of the day or from, from work day to end of the day. And then the sixth one is give yourself some grace. We actually on our website, Jordan typed a comment, we do have, I don't have them printed because my homeschooling efforts have taken up all my paper at here over at the Newman house. But um, on our website, we have this awesome, maybe Jordan in the comments, you could put um, an attachment of a picture, but we have a new, a couple new tools for you guys. The first one is a daily checklist for kids. You know, a lot of times that constant verbal really gets at kids and it kind of wears them down. So if there's a way to non-verbally communicate with them, it's very helpful. So go on our website and look for the daily, the daily, um, the daily checklist. It breaks it up in the morning and then it breaks it up in the afternoon or the evening. And it really is clear for kids. It really communicates to them, okay, this is what I expect and this is what I expect at these time of the days. And it fits into everything that I just told you guys. Um, the second new thing that's up on our website is the parent checklist. So I know for me at my house, I have notes all over and it's very helpful when I write things down. So we've actually created a really cool formatted parent checklist. Things I need to get at the grocery store, things I'm gonna make for dinner, things I need to get done today, phone calls I have. So go check that out because those two tools can make a huge difference in your in your daily quarantine life, along with all these tips. So I think I'm two minutes over my time and I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Thank you so much for joining us today on our live. Please, please, please share this if you found it helpful. We are really trying to grow our audience and our engagement, so we love it when you guys chime in. And Rami, I'm glad you found it really helpful. Um, we will be able to have this posted on our Facebook page so you guys can share it. And we're with you. You gotta celebrate the wins and you gotta celebrate some gratitude along with all these things. So thank you, we are grateful for you guys. 
and we will see you back here next week. We're gonna try to work out the kinks of getting a split screen on Facebook for next week, but have a great week, guys, and we'll talk to you soon.